I wish to speak this morning to all, but especially to those who feel that they have had more trials, sorrows, pricks, and thorns than they can bear, and in their adversity are almost drowned in the waters of bitterness. My message is intended as one of hope, strength, and deliverance. I speak of the refiner's fire. Some years ago, President David O. McKay told from this pulpit of the experience of some of those in the Martin Handcart Company. Many of these early converts had emigrated from Europe and were too poor to buy oxen or horses in a wagon and were forced by their poverty to pull handcarts containing all of their belongings across the plains by their own brute strength. President McKay relates an occurrence which took place some years after the heroic exodus. A teacher conducting a class said it was unwise ever to attempt even to permit them of the handcart, Martin Handcart Company to come across the plains under such conditions. Some sharp criticism of the church leaders was being indulged in for permitting any company of converts to venture across the plains with no more supplies or protection than a handcart caravan afforded. An old man in the corner sat silent and listened as long as he could stand it. Then he arose and said things that no person who ever heard him will ever forget. His face was white with emotion, yet he spoke calmly, deliberately, but with great earnestness and sincerity. In substance, he said, I ask you to stop this criticism. You are discussing a matter you know nothing about. Cold historic facts mean nothing here, for they give no proper interpretation of the questions involved. Mistake to send the handcart company out so late in the season? Yes. But I was in that company, and my wife was in it, and Sister Nellie Unthank, of whom you have cited, was there too. We suffered beyond anything you can imagine, and many died of exposure and starvation. But did you ever hear a survivor of that company utter a word of criticism? Not one of that company ever apostatized or left the church, because every one of us came through with the absolute knowledge that God lives, for we became acquainted with him in our extremities. I have pulled my handcart when it was, I was so weak and weary from illness and lack of food that I could hardly put one foot ahead of the other. I have looked ahead and seen a patch of sand or a hill slope, and I have said, I can only go that far, and there I must give up, for I cannot pull the load through it. He continues, I have gone on to that sand, and when I reached it, the cart began pushing me. I have looked back many times to see who was pushing my cart, but my eyes saw no one. I knew that the angels of God were there. Was I sorry that I chose to come by handcart company? No, neither then nor any minute of my life since. The price we paid to become acquainted with God was a privilege to pay. And I am thankful that I was privileged to come in the Martin Handcart Company. Here then is a great truth. In the pain, the agony, and the heroic endeavors of life, we pass through a refiner's fire. And the insignificant and the unimportant in our lives can melt away like dross and make our faith bright, intact, and strong. In this way, the divine image can be mirrored from the soul. It is part of the purging toll exacted of some to become acquainted with God. In the agonies of life, we seem to listen better to the faintly godly whisperings of the Divine Shepherd. Into every life there comes the painful, despairing days of adversity and buffeting. There seems to be a full measure of anguish, sorrow, and often heartbreak for everyone, including those who earnestly seek to, be, to do right and be faithful. The thorns that prick, the stick in the flesh that hurt, often change lives which seem robbed of significance and hope. This change comes about through a refining process which often seems cruel and hard. In this way, the soul can become like soft clay.
clay in the hands of the Master in building lives of faith, usefulness, beauty, and strength. To whom do we look in the days of grief and disaster for help and consolation? They are the men and the women who have suffered, and out of their experience and suffering, they bring forth the riches of their sympathy and condolences as a blessing to those now in need. Could they do this if they had not suffered themselves? Is not this God's purpose in causing his children to suffer? He wants them to become more like himself. God has suffered more than any man did or ever will, and is therefore the great source of sympathy and consolation. Isaiah, before his birth, referred to the Savior as a man of sorrows. Speaking in the Doctrine and Covenants of himself, the Savior said, Which suffering caused myself, even God, the greatest of all, to tremble because of pain, and to bleed at every pore, and to suffer both body and spirit, that I might not drink the bitter cup and shrink? Some are prone to feel that their afflictions are punishment, Roy Doxey states, the Prophet Joseph Smith taught that it is a false idea to believe that the saints will escape all the judgments, disease, pestilence, war, etc. of the last days. Consequently, it is an unhallowed principle to say that these adversities are due to transgression. President Joseph S. Smith taught that it is a feeble thought to believe that the illness and affliction that come to us are attributable either to the mercy or the displeasure of God. Paul understood this perfectly when he referred, when referring to the Savior, he said, Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey. Crossing the plain, Stillman Pond lost nine children and a wife. He became an outstanding colonizer in Utah and became the senior president of the 35th Quorum of the Seventy. Having lost these nine children and his wife crossing the plains, Stillman Pond did not lose his faith. He did not quit. He went forward. He paid a price, as have many others before and since, to become acquainted with God. The Divine Shepherd has a message of hope, strength, and deliverance for all. If there were no night, we would not appreciate the day, nor could we see the stars and the vastness of the heavens. We must partake of the bitter with the sweet. There is a divine purpose in the adversities we encounter every day. They prepare, they purge, they purify, and thus they bless. When we pluck the roses, we find often we cannot avoid the thorns which spring from the same stem. Out of the refiner's fire can come a glorious deliverance. It can be a noble and a lasting rebirth. The price to become acquainted with God will have been paid. There can come a sacred peace. There will be a reawakening of dormant inner resources. A comfortable cloak of righteousness will be drawn around us to protect us and to keep us warm spiritually. Self-pity will vanish as our blessings are counted. I now wish to conclude by testifying concerning Jesus as the Christ and the Divine Redeemer. He lives. His are the sweet words of eternal life. He is the Son of the living God. This is his holy work and glory. This is his church. It is true. I am most grateful for this sacred knowledge. It is my cherished privilege and duty to so testify, which I humbly do in the hallowed name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.